into uh, into that one to win from third on the grid. Has to beat out the likes of Dane Warren and Yuri Toman. We begin our final and that long run down towards the first complex is a decent start then from Dane Warren from pole position as he's got the slipstream already being dished out to Yuri Toman. He'll look down the inside coming into the first corner. Who's going to pounce and how many uh, wide are we going to go into this first complex? Right over the rear end of Dara McCormack goes Kevin Siggy. Jeff Riefeld being uh, squeezed out a little bit wide as well as they head their way through. But it seems pretty tidy inside the top three is Dara McCormack, the first one under pressure. For yeah, it certainly is Thomas Tatler, certainly did try and find his way through past Aaron McCormack after he got rough and tumbled heading through the Retafilio chicane. The red line's now coming into the play as well, of course. Jeffrey Rienfeld uh, trying to make his way through. Through goes the G2 Esports car as well as they mark the way onto the grass. Heading through towards Lesbo 1, very nearly a travesty, Lewis. Yeah, that was a bit silly from Tobias Gard. Uh, very heavy on the defence, uh, trying to fend off Sebastian Job, who had the run coming off of the Rosia. Plenty of side by side in that grouping, but it's allowed the top four to uh, top four or five to clear off uh, into the distance, into the sunset. Effectively, as we see Dave Warren leading from Yuri Toman, Johan Half also in tow, side by side in the background. You can see the red line car trying to get down the inside of the Mercedes of James Bowen. That is Riefeld trying to work his way back up the order. Fury down in tenth and eleventh. It has not been a good start for them. And by the way, no, it's it's has it now. Yeah, well, coming out now on the Ascari chicane, Jeffrey Rierveld already using some verbiage, speaking to his team engineers as they look to devise a plan to maximise their performance here in this final. Red line currently positioned six and ninth, given the fact that Kevin Singy now sixth place ahead of Sebastian Joe. It's going to be a battle between those two BMWs very soon, I'm sure, as Thomas Tatler currently nurses the 1.1 second gap between him and Dara McCormack. Dean Warren now floating across from the inside line towards the paddock, now fluttering over to the outside as he now looks to make his way down through towards the first chicane of the Red Tavilio. Yuri Toman primed and ready as well. Look oh. at this! Oh! Squarely back late on the brakes from James Baldwin, who finds himself into the back of Kevin Siggy. I don't know how they're still pointing the right way, if I'm perfectly honest. I don't understand that one. Way too late on the brakes for James Baldwin in his first final of the full season. You can see the two Fury cars almost trying to work their way with each other. Guy Gullivera was getting to the outside of Jeff Reaper, was almost assisted by Lassa Sorensen, was almost assisted round by Lassa Sorensen and his team. That's why his teammate had to back out of it. You can see they're looking at the gaps. We've got two separate trains here. The top four with Warren Toman, Fluke and McCormack, and then fifth down to 12 from Tatler to Haas, all involved in one train again. A look behind the scenes at Fury. And yes, you can see on the uh, background, by the way, it does say Fyra uh, Simsport. That is a different team. That's uh, Lassie Sorensen's team uh, that have worked well in, in lots of uh, big esports championships. Don't get too confused. Yes, they both start with S. It's very confusing, but still, uh, we follow. Yeah, we certainly do. Yuri Toman now currently seeing in second place with Jamie Fluke in behind, having a great race as well. Obviously, very nearly taking pole, had it ripped away from him at the very last minute by Dave Warren. Yuri Toman as well, just splitting the difference. Is now Dara McCormack lines up the last of the top four before the gap of 1.6 seconds then to 1.7, showing the favour of Thomas Tatler, who is under so much pressure. He's got Kevin Singy, Sebastian Job, James Baldwin, Jeffrey Rienfeld. What an imposing list of names that he has behind him here. But I tell you what, Dane Warren might be coming under pressure straight away. Yuri Toman with a vast amount of slipstream, a vast amount of pace. The RAG car, the tasty glory with Marcel Cincic historically here many times in the past, is now back on top again, takes the lead here in lap three of nine, and here in the final of round five. I do remember the top three at the moment. They're all battling for their first ever final victory. Toman, Warren and Flute. Uh, for RHG, they have had a final victory. It was last season at the Hockenheim Ring. Of course, Dane Warren and Porsche Command have yet to be victorious in the final of the season, but have two courtesy of Josh Rogers back in the spring season. Dara McCormack having a couple last season uh, himself as well, looking to become the first driver to take three victories in finals. Got to do a bit more than uh, where he's running at the moment. Side by side with Johan Haas and Kaiki Oliveira back in 12th position now after being passed by his teammate Lasse Sorensen. Johan Haas also working his way through. Bit of a shout out as well for the Apex Racing team for Jamie Flute. He's never had a teammate win. So this could be a big deal for him to make history for the squad. Yeah, it could certainly be. Seraglio straight up next now as we see James Baldwin power his way down and just see him in the bottom left hand corner as he looks to try and keep himself composed. He's obviously had to nurse some difficulties already 
uh, throughout the start of this final, but still big points on the table here for Mercedes as he looks to try and give himself a potential spot in the top 24 to qualify for the major coming, well, towards the end of this full season. And it certainly is getting extreme. Look at the top end, there's still Tobin out on top, beating to become a race winner here for only the third time this season. The last time he did it, round three at Hockenheim in the semi-final on that occasion, yet to take a final win this season as well. Of course, the round winners that we discussed, we've got uh, Sebastian Joe, who currently isn't in a position to take a semi-final win, because he's all the way down in seventh place. Here we go, into the slipstream, and Cormac's going to go. Is he going to look to the inside? He's going to clear it away. The Yo oh, my God, oh. Jamie Fluke. I was going to say Yo and Arthur again, but no, it's not. Jamie Fluke making a costly error straight into the back of Dane Warren. We look backwards down the order. We need to be looking at where Dane Warren's ended up after all of that. They head their way through. It's a massive lead for Yuri Toman. We're missing all of it in the foreground because we've got this fantastic battle for fifth and sixth. But what drama. No, absolutely. Kevin Siggy now looking to try and unleash his fire here on Thomas Sadler, but look at Sebastian Job, an absolutely eclectic move now as they go three wide into the Roger Chiquet, Thomas Sadler off the back of them coming together, managing to retain his P5 away, Kevin Ziggy now in the mix, James Baldwin looking to try and unleash himself in the face of danger, through the first Lesmo now, the Mercedes with the Tiger line as they head through towards Lesmo two, they run together, Job and Baldwin together again, they fought together in F1 Esports historically, Job very nearly loses it, but retains the car on the track. How, the, how on earth did he keep it on the tarmac? Yeah, well, I mean, he kind of didn't. was out in the gravel trap quite a lot. I think uh, Sebastian Joe's practising for uh, EA Sports WRC, which is coming out fairly soon, because that was crazy rally action. Manages to catch it and keep himself somewhat in the race, but now dropping back to ninth. I think Baldwin might be in trouble for race control after squeezing off through all of that, but we didn't get a great angle of it, so uh, who knows? As we look backwards, you can see Baldwin now with Rietveld straight down the inside, coming into the final corner. Big commitment from the Team Redline driver, the door being filled potentially from Sebastian Sebastian Job as well, he goes oh. for it, somehow still catches it. I can't believe what I'm seeing here from Sebastian Job, but he's getting aggressive here, trying to work his way up the order. Yeah, he did it once to the Lesmo, now he's recovered it again, but a fury car of Lassie Sorensen has now managed to overtake him as we now see movements up at the front end. Dane Warren now under attack here from Jamie Fluke, and the Apex Racing Team Mercedes sees itself in second place. And I tell you what, for Jamie Fluke, that could be a massive manoeuvre that could grant him a chance at laying claim to a potential race win because this Mercedes AMG, it is quick here around the Templar Speed. But what else is quick around here is RHG, and at the moment that is a big lead for Yuri Toman. Nine tenths of a second, the slipstream, it will be the faintest little whispers of slipstream for this grouping from our race leader. If they fight now, victory is gone. I mean, I'm just going to say, it, and I, I'm more than happy to do so, of the 48 drivers that we have at ESLR1, very few of them make mistakes when they're not under pressure. And Yuri Toman is in that spot where he's just not really likely to make a mistake. We look backwards. This was after the contact between, Jay, uh, between Jamie Fluke uh, and Dane Warren. That was what allowed our race leader to pull out this enormous 9 10 gap that now creeps over a second. It certainly does. Now Toman will have a great chance here to harness this lead and take it potentially all the way to Grant's first final win of the full season. Has been a stern contender for RHG. They've had so much success together as a team and driver throughout the history of ESL R1, back at the spring season, all the way back since Katowice. They harness their best form in the online rounds as Dara McCormack now looks to hover all over the back of Dave Warren. Has the tyres finally come to a to a grisly end here for the Porsche Coanda team. Of course, they come here with only one car here in the final after losing out with the likes of Joshua Rogers, Mac Backham and Mitchell de Jong. And now this time, Dave Warren, despite holding on to the fastest lap, is going to come under excruciating pressure from Dara McCormack, who's been here, done it several times before, especially here at Monza, as he takes the outside line into turn one. He'll become the inside line of turn two. He'll look to try and elevate himself into the top three, a podium on the table as these two drivers fight around the Curva Grande. Yeah, and they continue this fight. They head their way through. Slipstream will be going the way of the Porsche Coanda car on the inside, going through Curva Grande. There's not long left to go in this race. Just four laps, three ones. They've completed this one. It's already ticking away. Dane Warren backs out of it. McCormack fires his way through up into third position. The gap now a second between McCormack and Fluke. It's a second between Fluke and Toman. I don't know, George. I don't see that switching at all. I think 
It's home. And if he, it's, it's in his hands. If he makes the mistake now, then yes, sure, it's open. But Toman's not the driver to make mistakes in these scenarios. He's so good under pressure. Well, Jamie Fluke has just broke into within that second gap now. It's now nine and a half, ten, so he is pushing. He's trying. He wants to try. This is his best opportunity to grab a final win. Here in ESPN, I want to look at the gap. It continues to come down. It's very nearly dip below the eight-tenths of a second mark here as they exit the Ascari chicane this time around. Dane Warren once again flittering all over the back of the Williams, belonging to Darren McCormack, the Irishman, looking to try and harness the P3 at this point. But look at this. Toman not gaining Delta, but losing it as they come around Alboreto corner. It's eight tenths of a second now, and it's creeping into seven, Lewis. Yeah, I shouldn't, uh, shouldn't deny Jamie Fluke, should I? Uh, again, we've said before, the Apex Racing team, they're looking like a different outfit since they've taken on this Mercedes. We know the Audi's fast, that's what they were in last season, but it didn't gel with their driving uh, uh, style. There was that whole thing that we had uh, in uh, in an interview last uh, round with the Apex Racing team, where they were saying basically, you know, grass always greener and all that lot in a different car. Uh, and it, regardless of whether that being a, a false statement or true, it certainly is working for them. Right now, it's not working, though, for Sebastian Job, who's in a... a Big, big fight for ninth position between himself and Lasse Sorensen. Sebastian Job will work his way through, but it certainly is not going to be the victory uh, for Sebastian Job. I think he'll blame how he wasn't qualifying. Once again, losing time. We know he could do a point nine uh, and did not show it. Yeah, it was, it was up there. It's definitely one of the most bizarre qualifying sessions ever as Sebastian Job continues to try and defend his place in P9 against that of Lasse Sorensen. Of course, uh, Sebastian Job, championship leader, coming into this race tonight. And being pursued as well as we rejoin Thomas Tatler in fifth. He's got Kevin Singy in behind him. Dave Warren, who is 1.3 ahead of him here. And, of course, Tatler, who has managed to lead this second group of cars, essentially, all the way here to lap seven of nine is absolutely unbelievable. And, and, and the stellar drive certainly is he's, the pressure has been mounted against him. Time and time again, we, of course, allude back to that fracas coming through towards the Roger Chicane. He was able to hold off the pressure back then, and if he can do that and carry this through, he has a great chance of potentially bringing back a haul of points. And again, I look to the top, the delta between Fluke and Toman still continues to come down, and McCormack is now 1.2 away from P2. Yeah, Fluke's pace is unreal. He's pulling away from Dara McCormack, one of the fastest peddlers in the entire championship. That gap is now six tenths of a second. I'm changing my tune here. Fluke will absolutely have an attempt. I don't think Yuri Toman has made a single mistake, but I think that last little wisp of slipstream has just helped Fluke pull himself along. And his pace towards the end of these races looks really, really strong right now. And he is committing fully around Monza, is not leaving any margin left on the track. He's taking risky lines. He's putting it on the table to try and take victory. There is two laps left to go as they head round Curva Grande. The gap is under half a second. Surely, down to the Retifilio, the next time on the last lap of this race, Jamie Fluke is going to have a look. He's got to think now, inside, outside, where is he going to go? Yeah, and he's committed to the curbs as well. We saw it heading out of turns one and two. He knows that this is his best opportunity to bring a final win to the table, not just for himself, but for the entirety of the Apex Racing Team. As we take a look at the bottom right, our current race leader, Yuri Toman, will understand that the pressure is going to become unsurmountable. As now we're seeing the Mercedes get closer and closer to the back of the Audi R8 LMS now as they make their way down towards the Ascari. In behind, there's still a battle brew between McCormack and Warren, who are fighting over the final podium place here in this classification. We're coming towards the end now of the penultimate lap of the race. And still at this point, Toman, who has led the RAG team to many a great success in the past is now spying when Apex Racing's Jamie Fluke, who made but certainly history in his own right by taking victory back at the Nürburgring in the semi-final. Let's see what happens then. One final run around Monza. Who is going to take top honours? Will it be the RAG driver of Yuri Toman? Will it be the Apex Racing Team driver of Jamie Fluke? The defensive line's being taken from Yuri Toman. He pulls it back over to the left-hand side, and Fluke is not going to be close enough coming down to the Retifilio. It's definitely between these two. 1.6 seconds back to Dara McCormack, who might well have to fend off Dane Warren. They head their way through and navigate that first chicane brilliantly, but there was no attempt from Jamie Fluke. He simply was not close enough. There's plenty of battles 
falls behind, not just that one for third, but literally every other spot. Sebastian Job trying to get past, uh, and trying to fend off Lasse Sorensen. You've got Jeffrey Riebeld in there with Timus Tatler, but you have this enthralling battle for the lead. No option to come through, but there is one from Warren. Yeah, there certainly is inside line into the Roger forces McCormack to take the sausage curves on the right hand side coming through the Roger chicane and is able to hold on to the third place at this point. But take a look at the battle for the lead of the front. Still Toman leads, Fluke unable to get within beyond that four tenth of a second gap that has been held for now. A rise smile on the face of Jamie Fluke as they head down Seraglio. He's trying with all his might, just can't quite unlock the pace here in behind this Mercedes to grant himself an overtake against to Toman's Audi R8. One of the most consistent drivers in ESL R1 has delivered so many solid results for the R8 G team, has picked up so many solid points for the team that's leading in that team's championship. They're having a terrible day. All three drivers knocked out uh, that aren't Yuri Toman from the squad. No Thibaut Kazimov, no Erhan Yovsky, no Marcel Chinchik. Absolutely no problem for the R8 G team as Yuri Toman will come through the final corner. And for the first time, he will win a final in ESL R1. It is Toman on top it is fourth victory overall and it is him taking top honors just about beating out jamie fluke put on an unbelievable display mccormack will have to take third and settle for it and dane warren despite having the fastest lap will be fourth it was a thrilling battle of pressure around the temple of speed and it is yiri toman on top for the first time. We've seen Marcel Cincic take victory for the RHG team. We've seen him take victory in the championship in the spring season, but now it's Yuri Toman's time to march as well to the top. Unreal. Unreal, George.